So I feel like my lungs have absorbed all the abuse of generations of my family. When I was a little kid, they all smoked, which was which was just you know the beginning of uh, of the iceberg. But my lungs took it all in, all the smoke, and metaphorically, all the fighting, all my father's stories about Okinawa. All my father's stories about Guadalcanal, you know, all the ears that the, him and his friends cut off for the Japanese, all the battles that he beat up my mother, I took it all into my lungs, and I didn't breathe my whole life. You know, they say childhood asthma. This is childhood asthma. I'm 50 years old, and now I'm on a nebulizer. So tonight, what happened? My brother, the Marine who fought in Vietnam, exploded in the hallway for no reason. All the neighbors came out. I was scared for my life. He's threatened my life several times. And he started yelling and he threw all the stuff at the door that the women in the family had prepared because I'm sick. His wife's meatballs, his daughter-in-law's, you know, little garbage pails with covers so my mother doesn't have to be infected by my sputum and tissues which has Mercer on it. And the daughter-in-law had bought me uh, a red plate, a red bowl, and a red cup because my mother has everything in blue. So this way my mother doesn't touch the red plate, the red bowl, the red cup. It's just for me. And I wash it and it's mine. Well, the plate broke. And I, I called my friends and I said, somebody's got to come over here. I fear for my life. And we talked to the police and they told me what to do. They said, don't be alone. Lock the windows, put a chair behind the door. They said, does he have a key to the house? I said, I don't know. And my good friend came over and spent the night and we made a piece of artwork with the plate. The plate broke. It looked like two lungs like my lungs. And then my friend said, it looks like a peace symbol. So we made a peace symbol about it. And, um, and then we sat down and I made pasta, orecchietta. And we looked at the tray of meatballs that Vivian had sent over. And for some reason it was double wrapped with packing tape. I never seen a tray of meatballs wrapped like this. So I joked to my friend, his name's Will McAdams. I said, well, or I said, or he said, or we said together, I guess, you know, she wrapped it knowing how her husband might throw it. And I, I said, yeah, that's, you know, that's how you have to wrap your meatballs. So when we were making the artwork, Will said, you know, let's make that the title of this artwork, how to wrap your meatballs. And we took photos of the plate, which was beautiful. And um, it came out how to wrap your meat because the light blocked out balls. I feel like I have a lot of balls, but I feel sick of being the battleground of my family and my vulnerable girl body. This is my body, these are my lungs. I have to live and die with these lungs. But these lungs have absorbed all the shit of all the generations of all the Italians and all the psychos, all the paranoid schizophrenia. And here I sit on a nebulizer, drinking in the sweet air every four hours, the medicated, nebulized air that costs $2,000 a month. And I don't have a way to pay for this air either. Medicare said, this is a life-sustaining medicine, so we're not paying for it unless you're in a nursing home. Well, I'm not in a nursing home. I told the hospital, you want me to leave here? Three conditions. You give me the medicine, you send me a bill, you understand I'm not paying that bill. Okay, this is survivor number 00795424, signing out for this morning. Friday, the 13th of April, 2012, Yonkers, New York. 
waiting for the home visiting nurse to come.